Hello, and welcome to this Open Dental webinar. In this webinar, we'll be discussing the patient portal. For this webinar, we'll be covering what the patient portal is, how to set up the patient portal, automatic invites, manually inviting patients to the patient portal, what patients see on their end, and briefly talking about patient portal payments. So let's get started. The Patient Portal is an open dental e-service that is free of charge for customers on support. With it, patients can view their statements, make payments, see upcoming appointments, review treatment plans, send and receive secure web mail, and view images and PDFs. So how do we get this going on our side? That's the first step to make this work. To enable the patient portal, we need to set up a couple of different things. The first thing we need to do is give our office staff some way to view patient portal information. To do that, we're going to be adding them to the patient information. In this patient information in the left, we can actually add a row that's specifically for patient portal information. To add it to this patient information, as I have it here, we're gonna to wanna to go into the chart setup. So if we go to setup, display fields, we're going to go to chart patient information. Here we'll see a grid with all of the fields currently showing in the chart module. Right now, patient portal is my top option. If you were doing this from the beginning, it would look something like this. patient portal as a row, we can select it, click the left arrow, now it's in our field showing. To move it to the top, we can go ahead and select it, and then move it up the list using the up and down arrows. Once we have this row where we want it, we can select OK, and then see the patient portal is selectable here. If we double click into this row, we can see that we have some options for providing online access to this patient. We'll come back to this. The other thing we need to go ahead and set up is what modules the patients will be able to see in the patient portal itself. If we come up to eServices, from eServices and sign up, we can go ahead and say what our patients are actually going to see in the patient portal itself. We'll come up here to more settings. And now we have the features that are available in the patient portal. For each of these, we're going to designate a specific section that the patient sees in the portal. So if we don't want them to be able to make payments, we can uncheck this box, do this for our account module as well, web mail, whatever it is that we'd like to limit. For the purposes of this, we go ahead and recheck all of these. The next thing we want to do is to set the patient images. One of the big features of the patient portal is that we can show images to our patients outside of sending them through secure webmail. To set this up for patient portal, we need to go to setup and definitions. Here under image categories, we can see all of the folders that we normally have in the imaging module. But note that we also have usage listed here. The usage is going to dictate whether or not this folder appears for us in the patient portal. So for example, if I want to make my patient pictures available, I can double click in here, and then I can check for show in the patient portal. Once I've configured these image folders to be the way that I'd like, I can close out and move to the next step. And this step is going to be setting up the patient-facing URL. This is going to be the link that patients actually use to access the patient portal. This can be found underneath eServices and Patient Portal. The URL that we're talking about is this one at the top. This is going to be the link that every single patient uses to access Patient Portal. When they get there, they'll have their own separate login to get in with their username and password as defined in the system. 
Note that we can customize this URL, but this will not automatically attach the patient portal to what this URL is. Customizing this URL will only redirect to a different website, like say your website, where you might have a link to the patient portal instead. The constructed URL is what we're going to use to navigate the patient to our patient portal. This cannot be changed and is static inside of Open Dental. Note that there are two different URLs here. There's the login page and the make a payment page. If we navigate to the login page, we'll be brought to the patient portal where the patient can sign in with their username and password as assigned in Open Dental. If we instead use the make a payment URL, this will bring us to a very similar page, but instead they won't log into the patient portal, but identify themselves with their first name, last name, and birth date as taken from your database. At the bottom, we have this notification email. This is where we can configure the email that is sent to alert patients of secure webmail in the patient portal. We can edit the body by clicking edit here at the bottom. Or you can edit the subject by changing that here. So now we have an understanding of the different websites that we can get to using the patient portal. Now, how does this patient actually get their username and password? This can be done a couple of different ways. The first thing we can do is use the automatic invites. Automatic invites can be found from the eServices tab and automated messaging. We can click add patient portal invite and then set it up as a specific rule in our system. The first thing we need to identify is when we're actually sending this. So this could be one hour after the appointment is what we have as the default. Or if you choose to, you could set this to before the appointment with maybe five hours of lead time so that they can log in before the appointment. On the right hand side, we can set the do not send within blank of appointment. This can be days or hours, and it's going to limit the time that we send this specific message before their appointment. So for example, if we do have it set to five hours, but we say don't send within the first hour, it will only send two to five hours before that appointment not that first hour before. The set of rules over on the right hand side of the screen are specific to the patient portal. These are going to dictate how often or when we're sending these invites. Invite until patient visits portal is going to say that we're going to keep on sending this notification until the patient actually visits according to the rules here. So if they don't visit after their first appointment, we would send it on the second. If we have it on invite once per appointment, this is only going to send one time per appointment, no matter what. So even if they've accessed, they'll still be receiving this reminder. And then the last one, we can invite once per appointment if patient has not visited portal in blank days. At the bottom, we can configure the email that is sent to the patient to notify them. What we're really concerned about here is making sure that we keep this username and password tag. These tags are what's going to tell the patient what their username and password are for accessing the patient portal. The rest of these tags can be set up as needed using the key at the bottom. If you have multiple languages in your office, keep in mind that you can set different languages to be sent in these reminders depending on the patient's language. To set this up, we can go ahead and click on Add Language, and then select one for our template. Go ahead and select Spanish, for instance. Now we're going to have our default and our Spanish tab. Keep in mind that this isn't going to automatically populate with that language. This will need to be replaced as needed, but then will be used for any patient that is marked as speaking Spanish. The other way we can send these invitations for the patient portal is manually. The method we just talked about will generate a username and a password for the patient if it does not exist. Practices may also generate this information manually using the chart display that we set up earlier. 
So first, we want to make sure that we've added this patient portal access as a row. Then we can double click into this row. This is going to show the patient facing URL that they'll use to access the patient portal. That's the same one we looked at earlier. And then it will also show the online username and password if it's been set. What we want to do is simply click provide online access. And then the system is going to warn us if we're missing any information. Let's go ahead and put in this address and city for this patient. And now we should be able to provide our online access. Immediately, Open Dental is going to create a password that is going to be the temporary password until the patient is able to change it. From here, we can print this out as a very simple sheet with just the username, password, and URL that the patient can then log in with. Note that the username and password can be edited by office staff. Existing passwords will always show as an asterisk. So no one else can actually log in without knowing it from that sheet. When the patient first logs in, they will be prompted to create a new password when next logging in. Now that we've discussed how we're actually going to set up the patient portal, let's talk about what this looks like from an end user perspective. When accessing the patient portal URL, you'll have the option to put in the patient's specific username and password that we had shown generated earlier. Let's do that now. And then we'll be able to see the patient portal property. In the patient portal, we're first going to be brought to the appointment tab. Notice that these tabs look familiar. This is going to mimic many of the modules that we have inside of Open Dental software. With the appointment tab, we can click on appointments and see any scheduled or completed appointments that the patient might have. Additionally, in the action needed tab, we can confirm our appointments and also use web schedule recall if we have it enabled in our software. The account tab, we can view any statements that we've generated inside of Open Dental. Here, the patient can open the statement to a PDF, download the statement, or use the twirl down to get a summary of the statement included. In the plan tab, we can see any saved treatment plan information that we have on this patient. Remember that this is only for saved treatment plans from the treatment plan module. Through the webmail tab, we are able to receive messages sent to us directly from a provider inside of Open Dental. Here's how it works. If we go back inside of Open Dental, in the top toolbar, we have the webmail button. If I click on this, we have the option to send a subject and a message and even attachments to our patient. This is what the patient will view inside the patient portal. At the same time, after we send this, the patient will receive a specific email message that we set up earlier. If you didn't, you can click set up here to get directly to that notification email. Once this is sent, the patient will receive this email and the webmail in the inbox in the webmail tab of patient portal. This can be a great way for you to send secure information to your patient. The next tab, the summary tab, allows the patient to view their continuity of care document. The continuity of care is a specific health record document standard used by US offices. This allows you to share patient health information electronically. In order for this summary tab to show, we must have the summary tab checked in the patient portal settings, and we must also have our SNOMED CT codes and CVX codes downloaded inside of Open Dental. This webinar does not cover that specific function. Once we have both of those conditions met, you can view the continuity of care document as shown here below. Our last tab, the image tab, 
allows our patient to view any images that have been shared from Open Dental. This is based off of the definition settings that we set earlier. Anything that is marked as showing to the patient portal will be able to view here. Then the patient can download. Right now, the only one I have enabled is statements. So those are the documents we see here. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. If you have any additional questions, please contact our support line at 503-363-5432 or access our complete online manual at opendental.com and make sure you're staying up to date on our latest training videos by subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications.